Welcome to Midweek Peak, Wednesdays at 4 p.m., brought to you by the novel Coronavirus. My name is Nancy Taylor. We're recording from Old South Church in Boston, where I'm mostly alone, certainly practicing social distancing, but also with me is Sean Fiedler. I'm here today to talk about the astonishing Thomas Thatcher. Thomas Thatcher um, was born in England. His father was a vicar. Uh, he grew up in Salisbury, and at the age of 15, he came to New England in 1636. He studied under the tutelage of Charles Chauncey, who became the second president of Harvard, under Chauncey's uh, tutelage, and he lived in the house with the Chauncey family. Uh, Thatcher learned philosophy, medicine, and theology. He became an eminent clergyman, medical doctor, clockmaker, and polymath known for many languages, including Hebrew and ancient Syriac. He was among the most popular preachers in the colony and regarded as one of the most eminent physicians in Boston in his day. Thatcher was 57 years old and serving as our minister, the first minister of Old South Church in Boston, when the worst epidemic of the century was visited upon the colony. In 1677, English ships infested with a lurking, invisible killer docked at wharves in Boston and Charlestown. Without knowledge or intent, smallpox was carried ashore on blankets, clothing, and sailors' bodies. It quickly spread, oozing its way through Boston's crooked lanes and into homes and shops. In 17th century Boston, smallpox was a fearsome thing. The mortality rate of those infected, high but almost as devastating was the effect of the disease on those who survived it. Many were left blind, others severely scarred or disfigured. You were lucky to escape with mere scars. Within months of its arrival among a population of four, maybe 5,000 souls, many hundreds had died. A young Cotton Mather wrote to his grandfather, quote, Boston burying places never filled so fast. The smallpox epidemic of 1677 was a public health crisis. To make matters worse, there were precious few doctors in Boston. The astonishing Thomas Thatcher sprang into action. He carefully wrote out the most practical medical information available. How to diagnose the disease, how to survive it if infected, how to avoid infection. Thatcher had the idea of taking a public popular literary genre of the day, the political broadside, and reimagining it as a medical document. A broadside in the 17th century was a single large sheet of paper with a message printed on one side. Broadside describes a barrage of cannon fire launched by one ship at another along the sides. The literary version, the political broadside, sported a barrage of opinion fired off or let loose into the public square a newly posted broadside would draw the public's attention. Thatcher's medical broadside, and I have a facsimile of it here, was 15 inches wide and 10 and a half inches high. The single sheet was densely packed with the most up-to-date medical information on the smallpox, entitled A Brief Rule to Guide the Common People of New England How to Order Themselves and Theirs in the Smallpox and the Measles. Posted in prominent locations, the broadside was an antidote to hysteria and in misinformation. It was the next best thing to a doctor's visit. But even more than that, this broadside was a tangible statement to those who were ill and terrified that someone cared, someone knew their pain, understood their terror, and was reaching out to help. It all but cried out, you have not been abandoned. You are neither leper nor lost cause. Though wounded and infectious, you are worthy of our kindliest ministrations and of our best medical information and efforts. He signed his medical broadside, a friend reader, to thy welfare. The astonishing Thomas Thatcher, known for his medical ministrations to the poor, provided pre-medical care in a season of terror. Unfortunately, while visiting a patient, he was seized with a fever and died shortly thereafter. The astonishing Thomas Thatcher died at age 58 in 1678. 
His broadside, the first medical document printed on the soil, was a popular source of knowledge and was reprinted posthumously in a pamphlet form in, for, in later outbreaks. This book about him was written by Johns Hopkins Medical University because in, in his broadside, Thomas Thatcher made medical history. At his funeral, Cotton Mather offered the eulogy and he described Thatcher thusly. For his lively ministry, he was justly reckoned among the angels of the churches. For his medical acquaintances, experiences, and performance, he might truly be called a Raphael. That's this week's portion of Midweek Peak. Thank you. All right, go ahead.